We are going to be fusion deploying. Our Cartesia. Cartesia is good for dodging disruption like in permanence or effect veiler that they try to use on your Alibur or your Lubellion when you're attempting to fuse. So they would imperm here. You chain Cartesia to dodge it. So again, they cannot use their impermanence, but I'm going to be going for a Rinbrum. How do you know when to go for Rinbrum? How do you know when to go for Lubellion? How do you know when to go for Albion? Essentially, if you have a way to banish Mercurier, Going for the Rinbrum is a good play because the Bistial will banish the Mercurier. The Mercurier is going to add a card from the deck to the hand, which will be a Cartesia, or it could be the Kit. Kit will be giving us additional disruption. Banish Mercurier. Mercurier is activating to grab. I'm grabbing Albion here because it's another way to grab extra disruption. And now we're going to be summoning Lubellion. Serenir sending from the deck to the Graveyard Retribution. Albion could send any card from the deck that we want to add back to the hand, which will be our Branded in White. So I want to add that back. We're going to set up a Branded Loss, the Lubellion, and we're now going to be fusing into Gangrenol. That's going to be triggering the Branded Loss. Gangrenol is going to send a card from the extra deck or deck to the Graveyard. We could draw a card off of this if we want to. We're going to send Albion so it activates during the end phase. Then I'm going to toggle on, I believe, so pay attention to the play. We're going to special summon our kit, add a card, return a card. This will be extra disruption. We do not need the Foolish Burial here. We have Retribution recycling the Branded in white. So I don't even have to use Albion during the end phase for that extra play of summoning the Mirror Jade. I could summon Mirror Jade right here, right now. Now, it's important for Rinbrum to negate the Mirror Jade because it is a soft per two turns. Soft meaning if you have multiple copies, multiple get activate. But if I activate and it resolves and it's not negated, I can't use its effect during the opponent's turn. So I'm going to use the once per turn Rinbrum directly chaining to the Mirror Jade, meaning the opponent could chain link block this play. Negate. And it is an option to return a monster on the field back to the hand, which I'm going to return my own monster back to the hand because I want to. Now look at the disruption here. An activatable Mirror Jade. We could banish a monster non-targeting. If an extra deck monster activates, we could negate and spin it back. We also have the ability to fuse with the opponent's field, summoning a monster from the graveyard, which could be Mirror Jade. If something happens to it, I resummon it, I get rebanishing. We have negate a monster effect of Mercurial. We have about four disruptions. Very good, very good. Albion, five disruptions. I know I've branded in red. But the dude's got evenly match. So how do we win against evenly match? Uh oh. Not good. Not good. If I had ad libitum, summoning the ad libitum and then triggering it on a separate chain after this resolves would be ideal. But I don't have that. So I'm going to Rinbrum. I'm going to spin a card we control back to the hand so it does not get banished. I am going to be recycling Rinbrum itself so it does not get banished face down. I have multiple copies of the Mirror Jade. I have multiple copies of everything else I banished. How are we going to win? I banishment, which is not going to be so good here. I guess I could summon an Alubur, maybe use its effect instead of fusing. We'll see what we could do. This is the absolute worst case scenario. And we have to play through a Nibiru. How'd this happen? Five disruption to none. Then we are setting up the Arise. Holy moly, I don't even know why I saved this replay. What? How do I win this? Banishment, summon. Then we are going to be not fusing. We're just going to be searching. Bring it opening. Unicorn banishing our Mirror Jade. I actually have no Mirror Jades left. That's it. They're gone. What the heck? All Mirror Jades are gone. I play two Mirror Jade. They're both banished. My field's getting locked up. How? <laughs> what am I doing here? What the heck is going on? Holy moly. And we got a rise. Everything going to the Graver's going to be banished instead. And he's looking at my hand and spinning a card back. Okay. Great. Get attaching. Attached my... Branded, okay, attach my Albaz. That's fine. Now we are gonna be using the Albaz during the end phase, summoning it, discarding a card. It does not have to go to the graveyard. We're gonna fuse with the Arise Heart during the end phase to make a Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon. The heck? This has no quick effect. During your turn, you could move it to another column and then pop cards in that column. I do think I made a mistake here. I should not have summoned it here. I think I should have summoned it in the extra monster zone, giving me the option to move it here or here, taking out the birth. It was my first time playing this card. He's going to be preparing. He's going to be Shang Rian, summoning the Fenrir right there. Now we're going to be moving over here, taking out the Fenrir, triggering the Fenrir. Unicorn also looking at my extra deck. We do have Mercurier to stop the Unicorn from ripping out any more cards in the extra deck. I only have eight cards left. I really do not want him to rip out anything too good. And with the card being banished face down, we lose another zone. I'm going to have triple zone locked. 
Cartesia Special Summon, Cartesia get Fusion Summoning into Quiritis. Quiritis can reduce the entire field to zero attack. Then we're going to summon the kit. Kit's going to be returning the evenly match back of the deck, adding back a Branded in White. We have no Mirror Jade here. Activating Branded in White now. Unfortunately, when we activate a spell, what's going to happen is that will trigger the Birth, banishing three cards from our graveyard face down. So we are just in a super losing position here. Banishing my goodbye to my uh, Branded Fusion, gone forever, unless I chain my Borlord Furious Dragon to destroy it on chain link two or higher, stopping the effect. Big enough, we wipe out the field, leaving him up with just the Shang-Ri. He evenly matched me, he had everything, he had a Rise Heart, he's locking up three of my zones. He's got the preparation, which could special summon a Banished or in-hand Kashtira, which he does not have. So the Rise Heart will banish that Kashtira he wants to summon with the preparations. Now we could Furious Dragon take out the preparation, chain Coritis to reduce the field to zero attack. All right. So he's not going to be adding back that unicorn onto the field here, stopping it with the Borlord Furious Dragon. Two Dark Dragons. I got four zones locked. Okay, like, I lose? How? What? what? I, I'm still losing. What's going on? Okay. Cartesia. Add, he's getting desperate. Said Max C. He can't use Max C with the face up a Rise Heart, so he sets it because he's not sure what I'm capable of. Shangri summoning a unicorn. I think he's out of the Fen Rears. To battle we go. We're getting desperate here. That's going to trigger the Arise, equipping it. One more material, and we lose. He banishes Furious. He locks up the fifth zone. I'm completely locked out. Shangri summoning from the deck. He's got Scareclaw Kashtira. He's going to be banishing from his own extra deck to add any card he wants. He's got Rai freaking Geki. Are you kidding me? Wait, he didn't add Rai Geki. <laughs> okay. Activating to get that third material. We're going to be popping ourselves plus the Arise Heart. As long as a card is not banished face down, we're okay. But what does Rise Heart do? It banishes face down. Did he already activate? He already activated, right? No, he didn't. Wait, does he not have another card? How's he not activating it? He did not activate the other effect yet, right? To get the fifth zone locked up. Oh, he's doing it right now. <laughs> there we go. Five zone lock. What could I draw into? I don't even know. What could I draw into? This is absolutely unwinnable. We got evenly matched at the start of the duel, if you forgot that. Thrust! <laughs> he plays right into the thrust. We are thrusting into our own evenly matched. Okay. To battle we go, and phase banishing everything. Of course, he's going to leave up that Shang-Ri. But I think he's completely out of juice. He can't special summon the Unicorn. He's got no more cash tiers to summon from the deck. The Fenrirs are gone. Unicorn is blocked by the Shang-Ri. But we're still going to deck out. I have 10 cards left in my deck. He's got 17. What do? He's going to start poking me down with a Pathfinder. So I'm either decking out or I'm losing in five turns as this deals 5,000 more damage. Herald of the Abyss off the top of the deck. Send the Shang-Ri, freeing up my zones. Now we have to play through a Nibiru. We're on summon number one, summon number two. Guardian Chimera does not activate here because it wasn't summoned from a spell. This is not a misplay. It was to trigger the tragedy. And the Ad Libitum. Ad Libitum being used for fusion summon, resummon the board load. Tragedy is going to be recycling the brain in white. So I'm not searching my deck. I'm using it's hard once per turn. You can only use one or the other. Can't use both effects. Setting up the branded in white. Banishing from the graveyard, come forth and summon Dragos Depelia. And just like that, we have 9,000 damage on the field. An unwinnable game. Winning it under Nibiru. Lethal damage. Why you should play Brandon Despia? If this duel does not make you fall in love with Brandon Despia, just that's it. Look away, play something else because this is it. We're going to be Branded Fusioning with the Branded Lost. Now you cannot activate cards like Impermanence nor Effect Veiler on the summon of our Fusion. Now, you do always want to put the Fusion on Chainlink 1. This is incorrect here. You do not put the Branded Lost on Chainlink 1. It now misses the timing of the protection, but it does not change this duel whatsoever. We're going to get Fusion Summoning into Lubellion. Of course, I know, but I say this all the time. I don't know why I put this on Chainlink 1. Why I do that? Lubellion is going to be discarding, get Fusion Summoning into Mirror Jade. Very good. And now we're going to be tributing for our Lubellion. Lubellion will be setting up a branded card into the back row here. Setting up our branded beast to pop a card. 
and Albion's gonna be setting up a Retribution. Retribution will negate the effect to Special Summon. Pot of E. Banishing, draw two into a Lava Golem. Okay, Mirror Jade activate to wipe out the monsters, which there are none. Okay, now we're gonna have to be very careful with the Branded Loss. We want to make use of this. We want to put our fusions on Chain Link 1 so we cannot respond with any of the back row. Lava Golem get burning. Alibur, come to me. Branded in red. Do not chain branded in red to anything. It's gotta be chain link one. Everything on chain link one. Return back Mercurier. We're gonna branded fusion first. And if you don't change the brand fusion, that's it. This is where we get them in a lock. He's looped. We're gonna loop him under the branded loss. Keep him locked up. The back row cannot be activated whatsoever. Wabaku cannot be activated. So chain link one the fusion. So we have another turn of looping, another chain that is, as we chain link one fusion, and in response to the summon, either it's gonna be initiating another fusion, or we're gonna be activating branded in red on chain link one with toggle on. If your toggle's not on, they could chain Wabaku, that's not good. So with the toggle on, branded in red, add back to the hand, Albaz, get fusion summoning into Chimera. Again, he cannot activate. That's it, we've been looping him on a third chain. He cannot activate Wabaku, he cannot activate Ring of Destruction. Chimera, and within this window, I could use Borlode Furious Dragon to also pop another card. So he loses his entire back row. He cannot chain because we continually looped on chain link one fusion summoning with the Branded Lost, completely locking them out. Also gonna be activating Banishment. Now, why didn't I put this on Chain Link 1? You can't with a trigger effect like Chimera, so this had to be on a later Chain Link. The Chimera forces it where on the separate chain, he will be able to respawn, but it's over here. Pop the back row, add the Albion. Now, Albion in the hand, if we send the Albaz from the hand, we could special summon the Albion onto the field for extra damage. We got Super Poly, and just like that, it's over. Now, let me hop into another really good one. Very simply, he's gotten permanence, right? So how do we play around in permanence? We say it all the time, but now you get to actually see it, that Imperm is not gonna do anything. Holding the Imperm, because he knows I stop it with Cartesia, I'll chain. Again, gonna hold the Imperm, because he knows I stop it with the Cartesia, as I would chain to it, fusing with the monster he wants to Imperm. I know it's a quick one, but you get to visually see impermanence was not usable because we are countering the impermanence or effect failure. Really simple play. You just need to know that. Remember this. They're going to scoop if they have imperm if you get Cartesia on the field, then make your plays. We're going to be branded in whiting into Lubellion here, not knowing that I'm playing against a Numeron deck. Now, uh, luckily, I'm chain link blocking the Lubellion from being negated by a Gamma. Not that I even know that he has one, as the Call of the Grave's not usable on the Gamma. I mean, it was all skill. I planned this. I uh, properly chain link blocked on purpose, setting up the tragedy so he cannot do this. Now we got Mirror Jade. As long as we don't activate while he has no monster in the field here. So he's holding on to that Gamma. He's going to save it. We're gonna be going into our Branded Fusion, setting up a Lubellion into the Graveyard so we could set up a Branded card into the back row here. Activating, are you gonna Gamma? Still not gamma -ing. That's wild. We're gonna be banishing for Gangrenol. Gangrenol send from the extra deck or the deck to the Graveyard. We're gonna send a Brygrain, which could add a Mercurier during the end phase to be an additional monster negate. Lubellion is going to now be negated. Okay, wow, that was interesting to see Gamma be used this late within the turn. You did stop me from setting up a branded back row, but that's fine. Gangrenol, because you summoned a monster through a monster effect, I now get to activate summoning a Coritis. I am using Coritis over Perskenium because of it also being usable or branded banishment and some other idea. And the extra deck space is really tight. Setting up branded in red. Now, this card fell out of favor because of how popular the Bist deals have been used. I think it's time to bring back Branded and Red because Bistials, the usage rate is dropping dramatically, and I think it's a lot more safer to now use it. Magical Mallet. <laughs> Numeron Wall. Goodbye one for one. And Numeron Calling back in the deck. We got Dark Freaking Hole, mate. What the heck is that? 
We're going to be activating our Mirror Jade, banishing a card on the field here. Goodbye to our Alibur. I don't have a Libitum in the grave, unfortunately. So we're going to have to make do against a Numeron Network. Koraitis is going to be summoning from the deck. Mirror Jade activating to wipe out the field during the end phase. Let's go. Now, there's an improper way to play this out. It properly, a lot of people, I believe, would right now activate Branded in red, and I hope I don't do this because I don't remember this replay fully, to then pop the Numeron Network now. They can activate another one. So if they have another one, then you pop this, you lose to the other Numeron Network. You do not want to do that. Wait for it to activate. Why not? Okay. What are you going to do now? I'm going to Branded in red. Add back the Tragedy. Using the Ad Libitum, I could pop one card on the field and draw two. And then the Ad Libitum is going to activate, summoning the Mirror Jade back in the field to banish another card in the field. So what it, can this field even do, though? Let's look at the extra deck. With four materials, he can make Avermax. So if we pop one, he can't make Avermax. But with three materials, he can make unaffected from other monsters except Xyz monsters. This is 4,000 attack. It's very difficult to deal with. So we got to make sure he's got two. With two, he pretty much can't do much. And yeah, mate, do not get clopping. You're not clopping me, mate. I know it's coming. So we're going to be re-summoning Mirror Jade with the effect of Libitum, which a lot of people started taking out of their deck with the branded in red. I do understand why a lot of you are doing that. Reset up, even after getting Dark Hold. Draw two, pop one. Mirror Jade, before you even get to make that Link Summon, which would have been unaffected from the Mirror Jade, get Banished, and just like that, back to Fortnite, you Numeron fool! You want me to do how to play Makonko? Or I should say why you should play Makonko? That could be a good one. We're going to be sending the Tragedy, Foolish Burial being a good setup here. As I was stating, if you have a way to banish the Mercurial from the grave, which will be your Bistial, that's when you want to summon the Rinbrum so you get the effect of the Mercurial to search your deck. For Albion, for Cartesia, for... You can't search for Mercurial, though. We're going to be recycling the Branded in white with the effect of Albion sending the white in from the deck to the graveyard and the Gangrenol also setting us up with the Retribution in the graveyard. So very well done here. So Serenir and Albion is a combo to get to your hand a Branded Spell or Trap, which is going to be our white. White can use the graveyard if you use an Albaz as part of the Fusion Summon. Come forth, Mirror Jade. Kid Special Summon, we're going to cycle a card from the hand and then search for another card. We're also going to be banishing a card in the field. You want to make sure you are the direct chain link to the Mirror Jade. We are going to negate it from banishing our own card so it's activatable during the next turn to then banish a card they control. Thus, the Mirror Jade is a disruption. And we're going to recycle the Retribution with the effect of the kit. That is nuts. Cartesia add back. And do we have any other disruption here? We have even more disruption. All right. So we have... Banishment, which is Disruption. We have Retribution, which can negate a special summon. We could Super Poly, and then we could use Mirror Jade, and we can negate an extra deck. Let's go. And the Banishment can summon back the Mirror Jade. It's about five Disruptions. Did I already say the Mercurier? Is that six or five? Lily activating. Sullyak Chain Link blocking from a direct activation negate. That is fine. Sullyak search for the Rhino. He still has got that normal summon. Grabbing my friend purely. This is where I'm thinking, what the heck's going on? I'm playing against a tier limit purely deck. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. What am I disrupting here? That's fine. Add back. This is a hard once per turn effect. I'm going to either negate it or banish it, and that's it. You cannot use Lily for the rest of this turn. Now by making sure to use the Mirror Jade, I'm going to have to be thinking of a way to get it into the graveyard so I could use my banishment to resummon it to then reactivate. He's got the Rhino. I'm going to be negating the Rhino effect here. Now he does have a follow-up Sharon, so we gotta be careful about that. And if we negate the Sharon with the Retribution, it will then be sent to the graveyard. It will activate Diffuse. We do not want that to happen. The Gangrenol is gonna be triggering, which does Chainlink block our negate of Retribution, so we decided to not use it here. But we have Rimbrum to negate Kit. And if you're not Chainlink blocking the Kit, then what are you doing? You're in big trouble. Rinbrum not only negates, it spins it back to the extra deck. Hardcore negate. Hard negate. Hard counter. Get out of here. Spin that fool back. And what else do we have here? Oh, he scoops it. Oh, come on, man. I had so much. I had Retribution negate a special summon. I had Super Poly Fuse of the field. I had Banishment. Resummon the Mirror Jade. Banish a monster on the field again. Branded.
do we beat this? I, I don't know how, why this is even a replay. Solemn judgment, <laughs> negate anything. All my cards are banished. He may or may not summon a cash tier from the deck. If he triggers, if any of my cards get banished face down, that will trigger Shang-Ri, which will trigger the field spot to pop a card in the field. He could big bang the field, banish all my monsters except one. He's gotten impermanence. I, I, what is this? All right, he is summoning. A uh, what? The tier limit cash Tira? Okay, sure. Triggering my tragedy with the tier limit cash Tira. Don't mind if I do, thank you very much. All right, Arise Heart, get boosted. And Ogre now looking at the top five cards of my, oh my gosh. If he banishes my Brain Diffusion face down, there's no way to add it back. It's gone for the rest of the duel, it's limited to one. Ain't no way. And he did it. Branded Fusion is now banished face down. Unfreaking believable. He's got Solemn Judgment, Imperm. He's got the Arise Heart activatable to banish any card in the field. I just don't really understand why Tier Let Me Cash Tier here. Imperm? Now, I'm gonna be chaining Super Poly in the Imperm row. We're gonna be banishing our Retribution. It doesn't go to the Graveyard, unfortunately. We're gonna be fusing with the Arise, making our Coritus. Okay. Everything's good so far. Could not negate with Psalm Judgment on the Super Poly. This is a deck that's playing triple Super Poly, so the power of being able to break boards with the Super Poly, it's great. Wait, the dude equipped my Banish face down Brand of Fusion then had to banish it again face down. What are you doing? <laughs> Shangri locking up a third zone, triggering the effect of the field spell to pop a card in the field. Coritus reduced the field to zero attack. Gone again. Now Coritus can activate its other effect. Now, why isn't he solving? Can't solve him in effect. You can only solve the activation of a spell or trap, or you could solve him an inherent summon. This is not an inherent summon. It is an effect to summon. Chain link one summon. And that is gonna be fusing with the Shangri. Shangri and Albaz, what the heck does this make? Mirror Jade. Any extra deck monster? We are good. Albion sending from the decks of the graveyard, branded opening, making our monster indestructible by card effect. And you gotta be thinking, why didn't he solve him? When? What? What is he going to solemn? He could have solemned the normal summon of my Alabroach he had Imperm for. He can't solemn the Super Poly. He can't solemn the Coritus effect to summon. He can't solemn the effect of Branded. He can't solemn the effect of Mirror J to Banish. He can't even solemn the effect of Albion sending a Branded opening from the deck to the Graveyard to make my monster indestructible by card effect. He can't solemn. He's scooping. Now, let's speed on through this turn one unstoppable dino board. Y'all remember dinos? And he can pop any card in the field. So how many disruptions is that? One, two, three, four, five, six disruptions. Got to be carefully making this work. In the draw phase, we are going to be fusing with the Mascarina and the Borload Savage Dragon to make a Moo Dragon. Very good. They're both dark, so we get to make that Moo Dragon here, turning off two of his disruptions. Now, Moo Dragon is going to be coming dark so that the Pancratops could not target any of my dark monsters. Herald of the Abyss. We're gonna be forcing them to send a fire dragon they control to the graveyard, which will be the Dolka. Reborning Mascarina to be used again, so it gets that disruption back. Now, double disruption gone. Cannot Pancratops pop, so what do? So by e making this dark, it's now untargetable, and the only disruption there was the Pancratops. Flipping me face down, I could still fuse while face down. Fuse it into the Mirror Jade. And if you chain Mascarina, whatever he summons, before it even activates, before it triggers, before it does anything, I'm gonna fuse with it. Non-target fuse with whatever he summons. Now we got Mirror Jade. Sierra Nier sending from the decks of the graveyard. We have Mirror Jade activating for the non-target monster banish because he has no idea what I'm banishing. He's gotta use his card right here, right now. So I think we're gonna take out a Pinkertops, right? Pinkertops, get out of here. Sierra Nier sending from the decks of the graveyard, Retribution. And we're just gonna end our turn setting up with I'm going to use this during the end phase. Ain't no way. Hold, you need toggle on for this play. Add the branded in red to the hand, or you could set it, but with toggle on, adding it back to the hand, it's activatable during the end phase. You add it. Re-add back the Libitum. Fuse into a Chimera. Pop the field. Resummon Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade is now activatable again. We also have the branded banishment. That damn fool surrendered before I got to even show you it, though, but you know. Wipe up the whole field. Draw a card. Resummon. Insanity. 
What round are we in? We are in the pre-rounds. These are my duels. Playing against more Cash Tira. So I'm going to show you the power of Thrust versus Cash Tira. We're going to get Thrust in. Holy moly, I'm burning. He's taxing me. Now, what is the field we're dealing with here? We have all our cards are banished. He has the effect to banish a card face down. He could summon a Fenrir from the deck. It's 500 every time we activate a card. He could summon an in-hand ogre or a banished Cash Tira onto the fields. He's got Call of the Grave once cards are no longer being banished. Let's go. Summoning that ogre. And he is summoning from the deck. Fenrir Unicorn. It should be a Fenrir though. <laughs> Why? Why Unicorn? Why? Now I'm going to get thrusted into evenly. So whether, it, oh, you wouldn't have won if he didn't activate the Shangri. I could have activated something else. If I activate any other card that then triggers the effect of the Arise Heart, the mandatory activation when a card is banished to then equip a card, that makes us thrustable. We could then thrust into evenly, thrust into the Herald of the Abyss. I think I'm playing both in the deck. I initially was not playing the evenly match, but... I was playing so many duels where evenly match just felt so much better than using Herald of the Abyss. Burn for 500, and now let's get banishing. Get equipping, that's fine. I'm also playing one evenly. I'm playing so many one-ofs in this deck, banishing everything but the Arise. Now, how do we deal with the Arise? We're going to just super poly it, that's it. Set the Albaz, not gonna even let him activate. We are going to go right into the Mirror Jade. Now, if we give him the ability to activate, why would that matter? You would still chain Super Poly. If you give him the opportunity to activate, if you don't turn player priority with your toggle on, activate right away before they could activate, they then don't get to banish the Theosis. Theosis would be banished if he detaches as a material, which would then add a banished Cash Tira back to the hand. But if you deal with the Arise Heart itself, it goes to the grave, thus it does not activate. We're gonna be adding an Albion from the deck to the hand with the effect of the Mercurial being banished. And what's interesting is if you pay a cost by discarding a card and the card states if it's banished by an effect, it's still banished by an effect even though you discard it by a cost because it's through the effect of the Arise Heart, thus it got banished even though it was discarded by a cost. That's the ruling there and that's why cards like the Tragedy will still activate. We're gonna be summoning our Alibur. Alibur is here searching for our branded fusion and then you know the rest of this. The power of thrust, why you should be thrusting in nearly every deck you can fit it in. Add in evenly, add in Herald of the Abyss. We're gonna discard, we're gonna get fusion summoning, making our Rinbrum. It's all main phase two, by the way, so we can't go in for lethal play. We're gonna set up a Brand of Beast, pop a card in the field. We're going to be negating our Mirror Jade so that we can add a Mercurial with the effect of the Brygrand during the end phase here. Spin back the Alibur to be used next turn, and let's count up our disruptions. We do have an activatable Mirror Jade, so that's gonna be a non-target monster banish. Let's set up the branded in red. We could pop a card with the branded beast. Uh, let me recount this. Monster negate, monster banish. We could make a chimera. We could pop a card on the field. We could negate an extra deck monster then spin it back. Five disruptions is what I'm counting. And we don't have an ad libitum for a six disruption, that's fine. Five disruptions. I'll use one, pop your back row. I'll use my other one, so I got three more disruptions. Add the Albaz. Get Fusion Summoning going into our Chimera. We still have Rinbrum, we still have Mirror Jade, we still have Mercurier. It's too much. Thrust into Wipe in the Field. Well, this is called the L set. And we take a big fat L by setting it up just like this. Super Poly is actually pretty good with the set Albaz. It's actually not that bad. All right, Lubellion's gonna be searching the deck for a Magna Hut, Alubur, grabbing Branded Fusion. When do we want to Super Poly? He's gonna be activating Albion. Even if we Super Poly with it, he still gets to resolve his fusion, so we're gonna wait. Wait it up, let him commit to the field, making a Lubellion. Lubellion will activate. If we chain Super Poly, he still gets to fuse, so I would not Super Poly there. Now, this could be a great opportunity to Super Poly before it even activates, because if it activates, then he's gonna get a card in the graveyard that's gonna be activatable during the end phase, adding a Mercurier or getting the Albion in the graveyard, which he already has on the field. Let's fuse it up. I'm gonna make my own. Making a Mirror Jade, which I can now banish the Albion, thus he does not get the end phase effect if that's what I want to do. He will activate to destroy my Mirror Jade during the end phase, which is fine, which I can resummon with the effect of my Branded Banishment. 
Goodbye to the Albion. And now what was a really crappy turn one is now great. We have the activatable Mercurier negating the Magna Hut, attempting to banish my Albion so I would not get the end phase search. Absolutely clapped up as I reborn my Mirror Jade back on the field. It's now activatable again. So your Mirror Jade wiping out my Mirror Jade helped me out. And I'm now banishing your Alibert to get extra disruption. I now get a Mercurier. I could stop a card like Maxi during my turn now. I could stop Nibiru if I want to. I could stop that Magna Hut, which I know you have. And I did Albion search for my branded fusion. It was not a random draw here. Now this is where I'm in an uncomfortable situation where do I negate Maxi or do I negate the Magna Hut? I let the Maxi go, that's fine, I don't care. I do not care, I know you got Magna Hut. You tried to use it last turn, mate. Negate. Now we gotta play under Max C. We gotta carefully do this. Allowing the Max C, which we could have negated because we knew he had Magna Hut, trying to banish, I believe my Albion is what he wanted to get rid of, right? I could scroll up here, yep, I need that Albion for the banish. Making the Borlord Furious Dragon, and just like that, lethal damage. So we're gonna be fusion deploying it up, fishing out for any disruptions here. Gold Sark banishing from the deck, which is going to be our tragedy. Now, if he has an Impermanence or a Veiler, we could not only negate the Veiler with the Call by the Grave, but we have the Cartesia to stop an Impermanence. So right away, you want to get that Cartesia established on the field first, then you could summon the Alibur, protected from Impermanence. You cannot Imperm me. How do we know what to summon with the Branded Fusion? If I had a way to banish my Mercurier, I would summon a Rinbrum. So because of the Rinbrum being banished, I could grab a kit, which could grab another branded card, but I don't have that way to banish Mercurier, so instead, I'm going to be getting what would be good here. You would think Lubellion, but I already triggered the tragedy. Rinbrum, I stated if you had a way to banish, that would be the other option to summon. Instead, I want to get access to my Lubellion Bestial, so Albion's going to be really good here. By doing this, it makes it so your Mirror Jade does not have to activate its effect, thus it will be activatable during the opponent's turn. It's important to understand that. Let's get send in. That's gonna be Lubellion in the grave. Now it's very important to not fuse with the Albion. You can only make this play if you have another dark monster because we have to now make a Lubellion fusion. Don't be confused with the Lubellion Bistial with the Albaz plus another dark monster, which will be Alibur. So Alibur and the Albaz allows us to make this play. Banishing from the grave, banishing from the field to make our Lubellion. Now Lubellion could go into the Mirror Jade. I'm gonna be chaining Cartesia here to fuse with the Lubellion. That is going to be, before the Lubellion is shuffled back into the extra deck, I'm gonna put it in the grave and it will still get shuffled back. It's just being extra optimal as we now return the Lubellion, which could have been used while on the field. We now do not have to activate the Mirror Jade. Gangrenol is going to be sending a Brygram, which could grab a Mercurier during the end phase. Lubellion tributing over the Albion, so we don't have to send it to the graveyard through the effect of the Mirror Jade. And look at that. Mirror Jade didn't have to activate. I now have a Monster Negate. I'm now going to Albion set up a Banishment, which could summon from the graveyard our Mirror Jade or a Despia, then fuse with either side of the field. We have Branded Beast to pop any card in the field. we got a bunch of disruptions. So this is just a basic set up multiple disruption fields. So let's see if he could play through it. Tear top, I'm not gonna be using anything there. I'm gonna wait until he commits into a link. Why not? Now I'm gonna banish it. Once I establish it had no trigger effects, let's get rid of it. So there goes one of our disruptions. I don't know what the heck this is, but I'm feeling safe with negating it. Negate. I do not think so. What was he even trying to do? No one knows. Uh, a paragraph. Negate the paragraph. Now, Servant of Endy Meon will get popped by the Branded Beast, but I could wait until it gets three spell counters before I do so. So by activating three spells, three spell counters, I understand how the card works in Endy Meon. I'm not really sure where he's going with here, though. So that is going to be the third spell counter, and you could wait for the activation, but I'm thinking, you know what? Why wait? It's not a hard once per turn. I could pop it early, also stop a potential Pendulum Summon. So why not just use it early? We are going to now Branded Banishment. Summon Albion from the graveyard, and then we're going to fuse with either side of the field. Looks like this player, playing a deck I've never seen before, forcing me to use up all of my disruption, making a Dragos Depelia with that banishment. Now we could negate a card in the field, also reduce its level to one. He scoops it up. I don't know where he was going with that. And that is why you should play Branded. Boom. 
this is what I've been playing. This is what I've been trying out. I took out Perskenian. I feel like the extra deck space in the extra deck is really freaking tight. I got a bunch of one ofs because of thrust. Sometimes I want to thrust into Herald. Sometimes I want to thrust into TTT. Sometimes I want to thrust into a dimensional barrier because you max seed me turn one. I got to set that deep barrier turn one if you max see me, generally. Sometimes I want evenly over the Herald. Sometimes I want to thrust into a branded fusion into my freaking hand. And sometimes I want to set up Beast of My Lubellion. I don't always want to set up a branded loss. So I love all of the one ofs because they are searchable and set upable with the Lubellion. A lot of people took out Brandon Red because of Bestials. I'm putting them back in. It's great. I'm liking it. Brandon Red with the Ad Libitum. It's a really tight deck list. And I'll show you how other people are playing it themselves. So this is the deck on average 40 card deck here. It was, I was playing Anaconda and then I took it out. Then I put it back in. Then I took it out. Then I put it back in. It's great. But as you can see here, 50% are playing it. 50% are not playing it. It's kind of, uh, it, it's Anaconda or Chimera, really. That, that's generally the options here. And because I was playing Branded in Red, if I'm not playing Branded in Red, I'd play Anaconda, but I really liked my Chimera plays too much to not play it. So something like this and you will do well.